preaching the finished work on one hand, but confusing the hearer with the need to do more, questioning leaves people with an inst- instability to work and not understanding that God has not only saved us by the cross, but he's empowered us by the Holy Spirit to live the life. It's the Holy Spirit that lives the life. Amen. Does the Bible not say the excellency of the power is not of you, but is of him? The truth is most people don't fully grasp what happened on the cross or they would live free. Here's a question. Just answer to yourself, how free do you feel? Are you really free? Are we really free? And did Jesus not say, I want you to have life and I want it to be abundant life. Are you really free? Why is it, why is it most Christians are still unstable in the finished work? Because we say it's a great salvation, but we're unstable. Yeah. Is it lack of teaching? I, I suspect yes. Is it lack of revelation? I suspect yes. Or is it we still don't believe that there's nothing we can do to be partakers of this victory and of the strength that God provided? That God has taken into his own hands. You know what the book of Psalms says? Salvation is of the Lord. That God has taken into his own hands to set us into and be full partakers of a finished work simply by believing. It's like Abraham, when God made Abraham, because Abraham was under a covenant of grace. It's like Abraham, what did God do to Abraham, the father of faith? He put him asleep. God walked into the pieces himself. That the whole work of God and salvation, now I want you to listen to this. Listen to what I'm going to say to you. The whole work of God and salvation is established by God. Say amen. Amen. It's settled by God. It's sustained by God. It's finished by God. And the writer says, I'm confident of this very thing that he that begun a good work shall continue it until the day of Jesus Christ. It's amazing that God moves to save us. I I got saved myself, brother. I'd been reading the Bible. Who prompted you to read the Bible? (laughs) That it is God that has saved you. That is God by, by a legal term, judicially, God lifted you into his righteousness and God sends his son to redeem you and then he sends his Holy Spirit to empower you. Amen, church. God lifts you into righteousness. You could never progress into righteousness. I'm progressively getting righteous. Nonsense. God has to lift you, boots and all, (laughs) right into his righteousness and declare you righteous because God has obligated himself by an oath. When God swears an oath, he's swearing on his own nature. He's swearing on his nature of love. When God swears a note, you know that Jesus didn't do what he did without the oath of God. Abraham didn't do without the oath of God. When God swears an oath, he's swearing on his own nature. Before he even makes the promise, he swears by himself that I'm going to supply every power to every believer to live this new life. And in this we find life and stability. It's not my word to him. It's his word to me. Andrew Murray says, wholehearted acceptance of this new covenant of grace is based on the fact by one thing, that God works all. God works all. God has sworn to you by an oath to fulfill what you can fulfill. We sing the song rightly. It's a great song. It's not by works of righteousness, but by faith and grace alone. And we are complete in him. Perfect song. Perfect theology. The song is right. But we live in unsettled works of our efforts trying to complete and add to God what he said I will do. This is the reason why the Mosaic Covenant failed. They just couldn't do it. They couldn't even do it for a few minutes while Moses was on the mountain. They couldn't do it. That's why he sent judges to judge them. They couldn't do it. And all of the weary promises made them liars. Yeah. 
One of the things that I love um, in the church, first of all, how many are getting something out of this? Good. One of the things that I love in the church is typology. Typology. Everybody say typology. typology. Somebody shout typology. typology. Right, you're awake. Amen. In typology, we take what is in the Old Testament and we see its fulfillment in the new in Christ. Right? Because Jesus is perfect theology. There's a good statement for you. Jesus is perfect theology. So everything in the old is written about Christ. Has its fulfillment to him. Jesus said everything, lo, I come in the volume of the book, everything that you read is about me. Every line, every page, everything that you read, all the tabernacles, all the temples, everything, it's Christ. If your theology doesn't lead you to a victorious Christ, Change your theology. Right? Typology doesn't allow you to escape what God is saying in the Old Testament to be filled in the New. So you, you have to, as a Bible student, I was speaking to one of our brothers uh, just on Friday and said, look, you always need to take the text and then you find out what the context and then you read the other parallel verses and then you find out what the whole Bible is saying, but it should eventually lead you to Christ <laughs> somewhere, Right? So typology is all about Christ. So, so if, if somebody wants to talk to you about the tabernacles, tabernacle of Moses, temple of, of Solomon, tabernacle of David, it'll be Christ, right? So all of the tabernacles, all of the feast days, all of the Old Testament sacrifice, the laws and the prophets and the dimensions, even of the Ark of the Covenant, are all about and find their fulfillment in Christ. Would, would you agree this morning? Say amen, because I'm trying to... Trying to take you on a journey that hopefully at the end you'll say, I'm really free. <clears throat> For example, let me give you an example. When God made Adam, he said, Adam, Adam's first day, he was set into a completed work. Creation was, was beautifully complete. God said it multiple times and God saw it and it was good. What's the first thing God did? When, he, when, when the man opened his eyes, because he spoke everything in the creation, but he kissed the man, right? This is the intimacy between Father God and us. He kissed the man. He breathed into him his own spirit, and man became a living soul. When Adam arose from that dust, and Adam arose in his first eyes, he stood in something that was completed, that God had already given it to him. Creation had been finished, and guess what? Adam got to inherit it. Because Adam got to reign on planet earth, on a beautiful paradise that was already complete. And we know that, that God brought the animals to him and, it, and Adam got to name the animals. Why was an elephant called an elephant? Because it looked like one. <laughs> it says, that's deep theology for you this morning, but, but he, he stepped in <laughs> to finish work. Amen. Now he, he just wants you to watch this. When God led Israel into the promised land, He brought them into a finished work. You know what Deuteronomy says? When the Lord your God brings you into the land which he swore unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you the land, a large and flourish land, you did not build. Houses, you didn't provide. Wells, you didn't dig. Vineyards, you didn't plant. God prepared a land for them. This is how he deals with us. He prepared a land for them to inherit and to reign in. But the workings was God. While they were wandering, he was building cities for them. He was growing vineyards for them. He was growing grapes the size of oranges. God was at work all in that beautiful land. He said, they're my people and I'm building it. And I'm going to bring them into something. They're just going to walk into the cities and go, Wow! When Jesus died on the cross, typology, he finished the work the Father had sent him to do. He didn't start the work. He finished the work. What the Father and the Son agreed before time began, because the Bible says he was crucified in the mind of God before time began, it was now finished. 
at Calvary. And everyone who believes is placed into a work equal with Christ that's finished. That's why when Jesus said it was finished, he wasn't progressively leading us into something we have to do, but he was placing us into something already complete, already powerful, already established, already unchangeable. He placed us into the full work of God. Every believer is lifted into a complete work that God has established for them. And in John 17, Jesus said, I want you now to bring them, Father, into this work that I've completed. 